Okay, well, this is our last video in uh, the entire series, and I appreciate everybody that's been with me on this ride, and if you've only watched parts of it, thank you for that, and I appreciate feedback. Um, we're going to take a look here one last time at the White Throne Judgment that we saw when we walked through Revelation 20, and just confirm that the other passages in the Bible um, what the context is at the white throne judgment and then we're going to look at sort of the eternal state of all those that never believed in the coming Messiah or in Jesus Christ and uh, so you get the eternal state of the damned and then the eternal state uh, of the blessed they're going to go into eternity um, with God and and his final uh, final realm <clears throat> So that will wrap it up. Okay, we're in Revelation 20, uh, 11 through 15. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it from his presence, the earth and the sky fled away and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and the books were open and another book was open, which is the book of life and the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So the eternal state is the lake of fire. We got that. And death and Hades is going to get thrown into the lake of fire. Um, Satan's thrown into the lake of fire. Let's scroll down here. Get a few confirmations here. Um, going all the way back to Psalm 28. Give them according to their work and according to the evil of their deeds. Give them according to their work of their hands. Render them their due reward. Uh, if you remember from a prior video, we talked about um, that if you have the righteousness of Christ, your you, uh, your deeds are all good or your deeds are all uh, deemed worthy for heaven. The ones that are falling under judgment here it's their own deeds that they did in their body is what they're being judged by as we see up here and uh, Jesus said uh, in Matthew 5 I believe it was no not anyone is good and even their thoughts are being judged uh, as part of sin so we've got um, confirmation here in Psalms and here in Psalm 62 and that you O Lord, belong steadfast love, for you will render to a man according to his work. And then in Revelation 2, And I will strike her children dead, and all the churches will know that I am he who searches the mind and the heart, and I will give to each according to your works. So again, um, judgment isn't just the deeds you do, but it's what you believed and what you thought in your heart. Okay, so that's the great white throne. Now let's take a quick look at the uh, lake of fire. We already saw that in the prior passage there. We'll just see it again here. And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and come out to deceive the nations from the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather together for battle. And their number is like the sand of the sea. And they marched up over the broad plain of earth, surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire uh, and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay, so we saw that the false prophet and um, um, the Antichrist, the beast, were thrown into the lake of fire all the way back as part of the judgments um, at, the, at the end of the tribulation period. 
And now after the thousand years and the last rebellion of Satan, he also goes into the lake of fire. So again, we have the eternal state, if you want to say, of sort of the uh, satanic trinity is permanent torment in the lake of fire. Let's look in Revelation 21 here. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, the portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So again, there's books out right now that say hell can't be a real place, but we're seeing over and over again that there's a second death, and it's the commitment is to the lake of fire, and it's eternal. Let's look in Matthew 25. And then he will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, uh, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Um, and that's one of the sad things is uh, hell and the permanent station in the lake of fire was never created for man. Man was always given the option to believe in the coming Messiah if you're Old Testament or to believe in Jesus if you're in the New Testament times and you would not have had to suffer the eternal wrath. You, it's a free gift and yet so many people ignore that and they get tossed into eternal judgment but it's their own will that sends them there. Okay, let's take a look now, uh, sorry, at Mark. Um, Mark 9 and if your hand causes you to sin cut it off it'd be better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell and to the unquenchable fire and if your foot causes you to sin cut it off it would be better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell and if your eye causes you to sin tear it out it would be better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. So again, I don't think it can be any more clear, you know, what drastic level do you need to go to to avoid going to hell? And yet, in reality, all you have to do is accept Christ as the Savior for your sins and see yourself as a sinner not trying to earn your way to heaven. Okay, so there's the eternal state, and we have it confirmed. Um, I guess let's finish this off. That's the eternal state for the damned. Let's just finish this off with one passage, and we really don't have much about the eternal state, not for the damned, but we've got a little glimpse here. 1 Corinthians. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God, the Father, to the God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all of his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjugation under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjugation, it, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjugation under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him and put all things in subjugation under him, that God may be all in all. And if that sounds a little complicated, it's just simply saying that God the Father is having Jesus reign on the throne until all of the rebellion has been put down. And once it's been put down, Jesus surrenders uh, ultimate authority back to God the Father so that he may be all in all. So that's our that's our picture of um, the final eternal state. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed watching this video series. And I pray that, that you see that coming to Christ has been the program from Old Testament to New Testament times. View yourself as a sinner. Put your trust in and commit your life to Christ and you'll miss the lake of fire and you'll have eternity with God the Father and Jesus the Son. Thank you.